Okay, welcome back. And uh, let's just jump in with uh, my quick overview of software. So computers, broke it down into hardware and software, right? And then we take software and we break it down into system software and application software. And we break down system software into your operating system, your utilities, and your drivers. So your operating system is what makes your, your system operate. It's a reflexive definition. So the definition reflects the term. Operating system makes your system operate. And examples of operating systems would be like Microsoft Windows, right? Windows 10 or Mac OS 10 or Android or iOS. Like computers, hard machines need operating systems. They need some system to make, they need some software to make the system operate, right? So all machines need some sort of an operating system. And whether it's your phone or software in your car, you know, or, or a machine, a computer in your car, or you know your your PC, your Windows PC, or your Mac, right? Like they all need operating systems, and so that's the software that makes your system operate. And uh, and then utilities uh, kind of take care of like making things run well. So just like utilities in your house help your house run well, uh, that might be like you know water, gas, sewage, trash, right? All that stuff electricity helps your house run well those are your utilities likewise for computers computers have utilities like antivirus software that's considered a ut utility software or backup software and that software helps computers run well and so that's a category for system software a type of system software it's utility software and then we have drivers and so drivers oh and i realize again i'm doing this thing where you're not seeing my screen so drivers um drive certain pieces of hardware. So if I bought a printer at a yard sale and I didn't have the software like for the printer, I could go to HP driver, HP uh, LaserJet, right? Let's say I had a LaserJet 1080. I don't even know what kind of printer that is. And I needed its driver. I could just Google that and I could come to HP's website and here is like, you know, HP LaserJet 1080 and I could download the driver. So here's driver product installation, all drivers, right? And uh, let me just see that. Install the HP printer driver software. Uh, learn more, sure. Let's see what it does. Windows built-in printer driver, document for HP printers. Uh, set Windows update to automatically. So it looks like it's interfacing with Windows, but sometimes you'll download the software and you'll install it and then your computer will know how to drive that piece of hardware, that printer will know how to drive that printer. And so drivers allow your computer to drive a certain piece of hardware. And it's basically the software that your computer uses to work well with that printer. So that's a driver, that's utilities, that's your operating system. And uh, just to explore all this a little bit further, just seeing what we got here. Well, we could also break up application software into any kinds of categories. Here's one example. Right, breaking it up in by, by categories of ownership. But looking at uh, how kind of software and hardware all interrelate, you could think about it as kind of this tiered model, kind of like a cake, and these different layers, and they're layers of responsibility. And so at one layer you have the hardware, and then at the next layer you have the operating system, and the next layer you have the application software. Well, hardware, right, is made to work a certain way, and then an operating system is made to make that system operate. So that operating system is specific to that hardware. And so how the hardware is made, the people who make the operating system talk with the people who built the, the, the hardware and they say, how do we make this hardware work? And then these people make the operating system to work with that hardware. And the operating system is specific to certain types of hardware. And so it used to be that inside uh, Apple computers, they had, motor, they had CPUs manufactured by Motorola. And inside uh, you know, PCs that ran Windows, they had CPUs manufactured by Intel, a certain type of chipset, okay? And chipsets like a CPU. And so you couldn't run the operating system to make the, the Intel chipset CPU work Right? That, that chipset, the Intel CPU, worked differently than the Motorola CPU. And so the operating system that was written for Macs to make the Motorola CPU work was really different than the operating system that was written to make this other piece of hardware, the Intel CPU, work, you know, Windows. 
But then in the early 2000s, Mac started to use the same CPU as PCs. And so now on the Mac, you could run Windows because Windows knows how to make that CPU work, right? Same CPU. And, you know, you could have a dual boot on your Mac. So the point of that story is that software has to be written specifically for a certain type of hardware, okay? Software has to be written for specifically for a certain type of hardware. And then on top of the operating system, your application software is written on top of the operating system. And so the application software is written for a specific type of operating system. And so if you're gonna buy software for your computer, you could either buy the Windows version or the Mac version, right? It asks you, what, what kind do you want, Windows or Mac? And you know you have to have the software that's written for that one operating system, and they're different. <laughs> You know, it's kind of like if you had, a, you know, a Toyota versus a Mercedes, um, you know, if you needed your car to work, you need to get uh, Toyota parts for the Toyota and you need to get Mercedes parts for the Mercedes. Like in the end, they're both cars. In the end, they're both computers, right? Whether it's Apple or whether it's Windows, they're both computers. But uh, each of them are built differently and each of them have slightly different parts and components. And so when you, you know, are working with them, you have to get the stuff that works for each set, each one. You know, so if it's Mercedes, you gotta get Mercedes stuff. If it's Toyota, you gotta get Toyota stuff. If it's Apple, you gotta get the Apple stuff. So you want, out, you want software to run on your Apple? You gotta buy software that is written for the Apple operating system. And if it's Windows, right? If you want, you, you got to buy Windows stuff if it's Windows. If you want software to run on Windows, you got to buy, buy the software written for Windows. And so application software is written for a specific operating system. And operating systems are written for specific hardware. Let me say that again. Application software is written for a specific operating system. And operating system is written for specific hardware. Okay? Because hardware is unique. People make it to run a certain way. And because of that, you got to write specific software to run it. And then when you have that specific operating system, you got to write specific application software to run on that operating system. Okay, it's, 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 you know, it's this interwoven layered layers of responsibility for the people who are building the different things. Like some people work in application software, some people work in op creating operating systems, some people work in creating hardware, right? Those different layers of responsibility are kind of like a division of labor it allows people to work on the different areas, and um, and uh, and then they inter communicate. They communicate with each other how those things work, and then they create their layer to work with each other. It's very specific. <laughs> you know, it's not a general thing. Mercedes stuff only works in Mercedes cars. Toyota stuff only works in Toyota cars, and it's the same with computers. Apple stuff only works, generally speaking, in Apple computers and Windows stuff only works in Windows computers. Okay, it's really specific engineering. It's engineering. It's really specific. Um, so that's a that's the layered approach to looking at hardware and software. And, uh, and then when you look at these layers of responsibility also, like an operating system handles certain stuff. So the, the operating system interfaces with the hardware, like the application software never, generally speaking, interfaces directly with the hardware. The application software is sitting on top of the operating system. So when it has something to do, it tells it to the operating system. And then the operating system tells it to the hardware. And so like if I had application software that needed to print something, it sends the print job to the operating system. And then the operating system prints, sends the print job to the hardware, to the printer, right? And when the printer is done printing it, it that hardware sends a notice printing done to the operating system. And then the operating system sends the notice to the application software, right? And so by doing that, like the people who create the operating system, they are the ones who worry about, can this operating system print with every type of printer that exists in the known universe, right? And when you create application software, you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is figure out how do I send a print job to the operating system? And, uh, and then the operating system figures it out. <laughs> You know, so if you write application software, you don't have to worry about knowing how to make every printer in the known universe work. That was the job of the operating system, right? The application software just has to know how to send a print job to the operating system, division of labor, different, different 
different layers of responsibility. So that's uh, the tiered model of looking at how that stuff is all connected. Um, and sometimes we call them, instead of application software, we call them apps. And so there's all kinds of apps or application software that's out there. Like there's Quicken for personal financial management, right? Like just to kind of give you like some of the most powerful ones. Uh, QuickBooks, you should take a, a class in QuickBooks. Uh, they offer it all kinds of places, including online. And you should learn how to manage your money. So QuickBooks is kind of like the high-end one that like accountants use. Uh, Quicken is, uh, Quicken, yeah, that's the one. Quicken is for, you know, individual users. So maybe start with Quicken, but start tracking your finances. So you can download all your financial transactions. Like anytime you buy something on your credit card, it gets downloaded. All, anytime you write a check, anytime you deposit money, anytime you pay off, like it's all there, all your records. And that's invaluable to become uh, more proficient in the world because you're gonna be tracking how much you make and how much you spent and where you spend it. And you're gonna be able to categorize it. And then you might start a small consulting business and you could start writing off expenses. Like you need to buy a new computer for that consulting business. Expense, you could write that off. You need to you know, get supplies for your office for your new consulting business. You could write that off. And so that's how you start to play the game. And then you get an accountant and you say, here's all my documentation and they do your taxes and you pay less on taxes and it all hinges upon you keeping track of it. And Quicken is a software, personal financial management software that allows you to do that. So that's like super valuable. Um, and uh, other software that's out there is like word processing software, like, you know, writing documents. So in Google Drive, you can create a new Google Doc. There's spreadsheet software. It's also a big one. So for working with numbers, and you're gonna learn about some of that in Canvas this week, some assignments. There's uh, presentation software like Google Slides. And then there's more stuff here. Forms is pretty powerful for gathering data. You could create a form that people could fill out and submit, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the amount of software is endless. Like, I think I've showed this to you before. If we click that and then scroll down, we could go to even more, right? And there's all this software that's been written. Jamboard's pretty cool. Uh, that you could, it's like for making fun little music things. But there's all this stuff you could, like, use. You know, video conferencing, like, all these different pieces. Like, when I was a kid, there was Microsoft Word. That's it. <laughs> right? Like, oh, yeah, it's cool. It's better than a typewriter. And, but now it's like, there's software for everything. You can download, you know, apps. And I'm sure you know as much about this as me. But anyhow, so there's all kinds. But word processing is good, big. Spreadsheets are big. Databases keep track of data. It's a base for all the data. So anytime, like, you do Twitter or Facebook, you're submitting something, it's getting stored somewhere. It's getting stored in some sort of a database. Presentation software, browsers allow us to browse the web. So I'm using Google Chrome, it's the best. Uh, graphic software, like you know, Adobe Photoshop lets you work with pictures and images. Video editing software, like Adobe Premiere, lets you edit movies. Web-based software runs on the web. Computer-based training, right? So this is a uh, this is all stuff about software. Um, you know, you could buy software and have it, you know, CD or something that installs it. Really, that's not done anymore. Mostly, you just buy it online, and then you download it, and then it gets installed. Piracy, pirates, are people who steal things that aren't theirs. And so software piracy, intellectual property. We're going to learn more about intellectual property coming up, in a, you know, towards the end of the semester. But, uh, you know, when people create software, um, they own the software. You buy the right to use it. You aren't buying the software. Once you buy like Microsoft Word, you can't then like make copies of that and then go out on the corner and start selling it because you don't own it. You own the right to use it. You don't own the software to do what you want with it, to resell it if you want. And so you're buying the right to use something. And so piracy is people who distribute somebody else's owner owned material, like Microsoft Word, without permission right or they use it without permission they've stolen it and you know there's various ways that you could steal software various sites online that allow you to do that but uh, it's against the law <laughs> and you could be fined for it 
And then so whenever you use software, you're accepting an end-user license agreement. It's all the stuff that nobody hardly ever reads where you just say accept. And it's like basically saying that you have the right to use this. You bought a license, but you do not own it. That's one of the main things it says. So that's, uh, that's all uh, my kind of little overview of software. Let's take a look at what the textbook had to say about it. We're done with that. We're done with that. We're done with that. So compare application software and system software. We kind of went through that one. Explain the differences between commercial software and open source software and describe models for software distribution. So commercial software, you buy it. Open source software is software that, like, you know, is created by, and commercial software is a business has created this to make money. They hired people. They paid them. They wrote the, the software, got written, and then they sell it. Open source software is software that's created by a bunch of people working together for the love of the of the for the passion of the project. So if you go to YouTube and how ooh, how uh, how Linus Torvald Ubuntu, it's not Ubuntu, is it? Ubuntu, what is it? It's uh, Linux. Linux. Linux is built. So if you go to YouTube and say how Linux is built, go watch this video for to learn about open source software. It's uh, totally awesome. It's only like three minutes long, but it's a bunch of people contributing to open source software. The code is open source. And you could go to GitHub and anyhow, there's all kinds of repositories that you can look at. Um, models for software distribution, I don't know, people sell it. <laughs> you download it. Explain the different options for purchasing software. You buy it online. Describe how to install and uninstall software. This is good to know. So I could go down here and I could, I could go to uh, my little search. I can learn to understand uh, you much better if I can get familiar with the way you talk. So I, I got to do it over on the other side of my screen, and I'm not capturing that screen. But if you go down to the type here to search, uh, and I'm doing that right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in um, remove, and add a remove programs is what comes up. So I just launched that, and I'm going to bring that over to this window that I am recording. So I have two monitors here. Come on, baby. Come on. It says it's not responding. I'm asking it to do too much. Let's try that again. Remove. Add a remove program. There we go. I knew you could do it. So here is uh, add a remove programs. And these are this is software that I have installed on my computer. So you can look through this. And if you see stuff that doesn't make sense to you, like I don't need DaVinci re re uh, Resolve anymore. It's taking up a, a gigabyte. Uh, so I could delete that if I wanted, or, you know, if there's something I didn't recognize in here, you know, what are HIF image extensions? Microsoft, I trust Microsoft some, but, it, you know, mostly I think it's from Microsoft. The system might need it to run, but I could look through here and I could say, I no longer need that. I could click it and I could say uninstall. So I could get rid of stuff that I don't need. Um, so it's good to know about. Something else that's good to know about is right here you have startup. And so here's all the stuff that automatically starts when I turn my computer on. And so maybe I don't want, you know, like I don't need that to start anymore. And uh, Raymere desktop customizer, you know, I could look through and I could Google this stuff. I don't know what this is, right? Like why is that starting? So I might bring up Google and it's called CCX, CCX process exe. I can say, what is CC, CCX process exe? And I could see uh, process, and what is, the process known as belongs to software Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, I need Adobe, Pro, you know, but it's like, why is that in there? And why is it starting? And do I want it to be starting when my computer starts? So these, these are all the things that start when my computer starts. And so I can look through here and just make sure that, you know, actually, I actually want these things taking up resources my computer starts. I don't need dim drive starting um, when I turn my computer on. I don't think. No, I don't. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I don't think I need it. I always turn it off when it comes up. So that's the startup. That's kind of good to know about. Uh, that's describe how to install and uninstall software. Explain the considerations around the decision to upgrade your software. You know, if your computer starts to not work well, <laughs> You might think about upgrading. Most software upgrades automatically these days. And, um, you know, if your computer is like five years or more older, you should think about getting a whole new system pretty much. 
And there's a reason for that. And that reason is that like um, the processing power of computers double every 18 months. So if you buy a computer at year one, it has the power of one. In 18 months, new computers will have the power of two. And then in 36 months, new computers will have the power of four, double. So in three years, computers are four times more powerful than you. And then in another 18 months, it'll have the power of eight. And so that's going to be 36, 46, 54. And 54 divided by 12, 54 divided by 12, 54 divided by 54 months, divided by 12 months, 4.5 years. So in 4.5 years, new computers are eight times more powerful than your computer. And so software is going to be written to take advantage of that power, which means your computer is going to be trying to run, right? Software that requires eight times more power, because that's what the software is written for, is for new computers. And your computer is going to be slow. It'd be like, you know, you were built to carry 100 pounds, and then eight, uh, 4.5 years later, new dudes, new people came on the scene to carry 800 pounds, Right? And they could carry 800 pounds up the hill all at once. Just That's what they do. They were built to carry 800 pounds. You were built to carry 100 pounds. If you're going to get that 800 pounds up the hill, it's going to take you eight trips. And you're going to be a lot slower getting the job done. Right? It's kind of like how computers work. And then in our, in our 18 months, computers will be 16 times more powerful. Right, And so that would be like, what, 54, 64, 72, six years. In six years, computers, new computers are 16 times more powerful than your computer. So in about five years, you pretty much want to, or four years, and just get a whole new system. Unless you bought a super powerful system right out of the get-go, then it might last seven years or eight years. But at 10 years, put a bullet in it. <laughs> Explain how, you know, put a bullet in the computer, throw it away. It's not going to last long. Explain how software licenses function. I kind of did that, telling you you get the right to use the software. You don't own the software. Um, and then we have categorize the types of application software used to enhance productivity and describe their uses, like word processing or spreadsheets or presentation software, right? The types of software that large and small businesses use. Here's enterprise software. There's like different categories. Some stuff costs a lot of money. Those are the kind of categories. Describe the uses and features of digital multimedia software, video editing software, photo editing software, digital audio software, podcasts, right? Music, creating songs. Describe the features of app creation software. I don't even know. Creating apps is software engineering. It's heavy. And so if they have software to create apps, it's got to be jank. Categorize educational reference software and explain, you know, I don't know. We'll see what they say about that. So we learned two basic types of software, app software, system software. This is a good definition. Software is a set of instructions that tells the computer what to do. Computers are very literal, right? If I tell the computer to make toast, right, it, it might like toast the counter, right? Like I toasted the counter, like a robot or whatever. Or if I say, you know, like, so, com you know, computers are very literal. You have to literally write the instructions. That's changing slightly with machine learning, which where the computers are becoming intelligent and figure stuff out. We don't know how they're figuring it out. It's a black box. We create the box and then they start learning on their own and coming up with how they do things on their own to achieve desired objective. It's, it's creepy and trippy. And people who are really, really smart about this, and that's what they do is like focus on machine learning. Uh, they are a little bit concerned. <laughs> like even Elon Musk is like, you know, we should probably think about this people. Uh, and, uh, and software basics, distributing software, uh, commercial, open source is free, waste software is distributed, local installation software as a service subscription. Yeah, so that's good. Sometimes you subscribe to software, it's 19 bucks a month or whatever. Sometimes you buy it all at once, right? And you install it. Um, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, that kind of gets into another, another thing. Um, managing your software, purchase, managing your software, purchasing software. So, you know, you could get student discounts. This is good to know. So there's collegebuys.org, collegebuys.org, and oops, college dies. I want college buys. College buys. And then for students, and you come here and they have good prices. They have student prices, okay? Specifically for students, it's academic pricing. It's cheaper, like you'll get like things that cost thousands of dollars for like 20 bucks a month, 
like I'm thinking of Adobe, right? And internet access, right? So that's good to know about. So there's different pricing um, for different categories of stuff. Uh, managing your installing and uninstalling software, we saw about that. And system requirements, when you buy software, it'll tell you what kind of system you need is required to run the software, how much processing power you have. You can learn about your computer by bringing up Windows Explorer like this. I'm just going to launch, uh, well, I'll bring up that one and control N and then just, I guess, go to, I don't know, I don't want to show anything. That's fine. But then I could click on this PC and choose properties, right? So I click on this PC and I'm choosing properties and, uh, and it'll show me I have this type of a processor, Intel Core i7, 4 gigahertz, right? And 32 gigabytes of RAM and 64-bit operating system, x64 based processor. So that's the specific type of hardware that it has. And, uh, and you might look then to see if that, if the software you wanna buy, run, if the requirement it meets what your system has. Um, a restore point is like with software, uh, you could, if something breaks, you could go back to a certain point in time. Um, so some of the stuff I, you know, it's, you know, we could go through it, but time is of the essence and not super important. So I'm making that distinction as I'm kind of looking through this. Um, you learn about software licenses and end user license agree, uh, agreement and who actually owns the software and you're given the right to use it and like number of installations uh, allowed. Uh, and productivity software, right? Let's perform various tasks required like Microsoft Office, you know, LibreOffice is the open source one, uh, word processing and spreadsheets, right? And presentation software, learned about all that. And database software, learned about all that. And there's kind of a picture of it. Yeah, note-taking software, OneNote, NeverNote, that's kind of cool. Those are kind of cool. Personal information manager, right? Like that's basically contacts in Google, Google Contacts. Uh, productivity software features, some of the stuff is just dated. Personal financial software, we talked about that, super important. Quicken is the one I would check out if I was you. Small business software, QuickBooks, right? Web page authoring software, desktop publishing, accounting software is QuickBooks. Vertical market, computer aid design programs, home landscaping, <laughs> multimedia software, right? Um, just checking those out. Image editing software, video editing software, drawing software. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So that would be Adobe Illustrator. You could see the AI right there in the corner, Adobe Illustrator. Um, and uh, Digital audio files, so doing digital audio, MP3s, AACs, producing a podcast, making music, uh, creating apps. I don't, I don't know anything about that. Um, educational and reference software examples. So, you know, different stuff that they have here, different types of software. So, like, we're using Canvas. That's course management, right? All kinds of software. So, that's chapter four. We're learning about software. All right. Thank you for joining me. If you stuck it through the entire lecture, if you stuck it out through the entire lecture, good for you. It will help you. Make sure you do your work, and I will see you next week.